Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to discuss the Champions Club competitive season, what it means, the rewards, and how it's going to work. So essentially it is a new mode inside of Hockey Ultimate Team, and for people that have been playing Hut for a long time, a few years, obviously a very welcomed return. It was one of the most sought after things to be added back into the game. They finally did it, so we're going to break that all down. I'll give my thoughts and things and opinions on it. Guys, before we do that, don't forget, check out my merch store. It is now live. You want a top 1,000 player hoodie. These are literally the most comfy hoodies i have ever owned no lie uh if you want to check that out again my merch store is down below i've got shirts mugs hoodies you name it all right guys let's get into today's video discussing the new comp season all right so you might have noticed on the head banner here you've got five new cards including the 96 stall yoki are you taylor hall edler and palat i'll show you how you know you're going to acquire these and what these uh what these mean the restriction down below you'll see three separate seasons split by your hut rivals ranking with a max of 14 games and again we'll go over what all of that means all right so to access the competitive seasons if you go to the hut champions menu here in uh in the main menu you'll go over and you'll see all of the club champions now uh, these are the new competitive seasons. How it is going to work is it is actually separated into three separate division tiers. So if you are in divisions one through three, you would access this one. Four through six, you'd go here. And then on the other page, seven through ten. Um, so we'll take a look at the one I'm in. So one through three. And we'll go take a look. You click on that. And it looks a lot like Hut Champions um, or, or GWC, for example. Um, and, and it operates mostly the same. So here is how it is going to work. Um, there is, you play 14 games, and you'll see that it's a lot like Hut Champs. So win-based, um, again, if you take a look at the top 100, <clears throat> you'll see it is win-based. So uh, you've got 7-0, and 0, you play 14 games, and it'll be based all the way down. The number that's really important is top 100, which is good because obviously in Hut Champs, um, only the top 20 get recognized. In competitive seasons, the top 100 get recognized, and I'll show you how and why uh, now, so if you finish first overall, you will get a 96 overall club champions choice pack and a 92 overall club champions choice pack. So um, you saw those five cards earlier with the Yogi Haru install um, and then obviously the other 92s, you will be able to choose one of those one of those from the 96 and the 92 uh, as well as two champions clubs triple gold pack. Those are one of the event packs that are in the store. It's the right one. They aren't really all that great. Um, they're about 400 points to buy, but you still get two extra packs. If you finish in between 2 through 20, you get the 92 overall Champions Club Choice Pack, so you'd miss out on the 96, and then you get the two Club Champions Triple Gold Pack. 21 through 100 will get you the 88 overall Club Champions Choice Pack. So the good benefit here is that from 20... So or 21 to 100, you are going to get a guaranteed reward. And I've said this throughout the year. The one thing that is sorely lacking in NHL 21 is guaranteed rewards. So unless you're inside the top 20 in Hut Champs every week, you could literally get nothing no matter how much you put into the game, which I think just is not a really is not a great way to, to reward um, the player base. It's just like it, there's a lot of time that goes in and you could literally get nothing. Um, I, you saw my packs in the prior video. I grinded in GWC and literally didn't get anything and it sucks. So um, it is nice to have guaranteed rewards back. After that, 101 to 1,000 will get you two Champions Triple Gold Packs and then 1,000 1, 1, 1 plus will get you the Champions Club Triple Gold Pack, just one of them. So... It is also broken down into each division. So for the lower division players, you're at a much higher advantage because obviously in division one through three, it is going to be extremely sweaty. Like if you were in division three, you're pr you probably don't have a shot at top 100, which I the one thing I will say, uh, the one criticism I have of the new comp season being back in is that not enough people are being rewarded. In my opinion, I think the top 500 should probably receive a card. Um, and even if you do outside of the top 20, 88 really isn't all that usable at this stage of the game um, for the competitive players that are playing this mode. Obviously, you're going to be somewhat competitive if you're trying to compete in this as this is a competitive mode. And it's just unfortunate that you're not receiving a, a really high end usable card. So that's the only downfall. I love that they brought back comp seasons and I love that they're trying something new. Um, so again, four and six and seven and ten. And the reason why I say that the lower divisions are really going to benefit from this is because you guys get the exact same rewards. Um, so finishing first in Division 1, which would technically mean the best player in the world, and someone who finishes in the 7 to 10 range, uh, first overall, will get the exact same rewards. That's kind of a tough pill to swallow because 
you know, obviously for someone that maybe if you if you haven't been grinding, you have a free to play team, maybe you're a top end player who just came back from GWC, something like that. You could just absolutely feast on the lower divisions and have a real shot at number one overall. So um, that's the only downfall there. But I do. The one thing I will say is that top 100 and, you know, in division seven through 10 really gives you guys, the lower end guys, a shot to play a competitive mode where you guys are going to get a guaranteed shot at rewards. That's the one thing I will say. I really like this for the lower divisions, the higher end divisions, obviously not so much because in my opinion, with everything that is going on, because the other caveat with this event is that it only runs until the 19th. So you've got now GWC, Hut Champs, Rivals, and now the comp season that is all running basically in the same time. Um, and while I love the ability, you know, the the um, mass amount of stuff that you can now do right now, especially with GWC running, you have a fracture, you know, you have a smaller player base um, already because it's NHL and not other game modes. And now you've got like four things separating it. And if you want to take take part in all of it, that is just extremely tough. I would have loved to see this be a full week long event so that after GWC and Hut Champs are done, you can then take advantage and and, and play the rest of these because it's only 14 games, um, but a lot of people won't have the kind of time to do all of that. So just something uh, I wanted to point out about how it's going to work. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, leave the comments down below and I'll see if I can't help you out there. Guys, don't forget to subscribe as well. All right, so now let's take a look at the rewards that you're going to get for club, for the uh, Champions Club competitive season. So obviously, this is only going to apply to three people or six on both consoles, if you include both consoles. But the 96 overall cards are absolutely insane. So uh, with two to Spark, one to Balance, one to Speedster, Yoki Haru is one of the best defensemen in the game. Um, whoever gets to acquire only one player is going to get him on each console. Well, three, I guess, technically. Um, but 98 speed, 98 agility, or sorry, acceleration, 99 agility. His shot is basically maxed, like just an incredible card. Um, and that's one of your options that you can choose between. The other option is the 96 Eric Stahl with distributor, barrage, and passing playmaker. Uh, obviously it's really not a contest at all just because faceoffs are only 89 for eric Stahl. If they were 99 maybe you consider it but he's got great size but uh he's just gonna play real sluggish and obviously yoki haru is just absolutely electric in terms of his attributes moving on to the 92 so 19 through you know 20 well actually first through 20 we'll get to choose between these guys six foot three alex other with two to swarm distributor and workhorse really nice card i mean the only downfall is that he's only got 90 speed max but he can get 94 acceleration he's six foot three which is great with 93 body checking gonna be elite in his own end uh the one thing i'll say is that his accuracy is really low if you have barrage that's really gonna go a long way but not a bad left-handed defenseman card by any means but then we got the 92 taylor hall with heart and soul swarm and gladiator even with, you know, heart and soul being a synergy that you just on the back burner, 97 speed, 98 acceleration, and mid to max shooting, with the same with deking. Unbelievable. Taylor Hall cards are always phenomenal, and this would be a phenomenal one to pick as well. Then the 92 Andre Palat with two to barrage, balance, and magician. Uh, same kind of thing. I really like this card. 94 speed, 95 uh, acceleration with spark and distributor. And if you can get barrage activated, that really maxes out his shooting. This is a really good card as well. I'd probably choose Hall still, though, because they're both left handed wingers, but a really good option for sure. So, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. The one thing I will say is that I'm happy that they brought competitive seasons back. We've been asking for it. And again, while, you know, there are some things that I th I personally would like to see a little bit different if they do continue doing comp seasons, um, is just, again, expand the rewards a little bit longer, uh, further out, and maybe make the divisions a little bit different. Um, Division 3 really doesn't have a chance, in my opinion, against the Division 1 guys. Division 2, however, I think does, just because of the how far out the, the ranges are. Like, Division 2, once you're in Division 2, you're matching Div 1 guys anyways. Um, but yeah, that's awfully tough. But for the lower guys, this is a really good opportunity for you to really go into a game mode and, you know, you're playing against, you know, guys around your skill level. If you haven't watched my breaking plateaus video, guys, please go check those out. I go over some great tips that will help you specifically move up in divisions. And again, you can check that out on my channel on my competitive tip playlist. Uh, but yeah, guys, let me know what you think again in the comment section down below. Give the video a like if you did enjoy it. And I will see you guys next time. Have a good one.